looks like a new hymn, but it's an old hymn with new words. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. This is the uh, first lesson, which is Genesis 32. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and eleven children, and crossed the ford in the Jonko. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have writ striven with the Lord God, with humans, and have prevailed. So Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is that that you ask my name? And there, the place of Peniel, said, I have seen God's face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him, and he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the second lessons are from the second antipathy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead, and the view of his appearing in his kingdom. I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage. With the utmost patience in teaching, for the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine but having itching ears, will accumulate for themselves teachers who suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away from, away from the myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of the evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. with you. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God grant justice to the chosen ones who cry out day and night? Will God delay long in helping them? I tell you, God will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the child of humanity comes, will this one find faith on earth? This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is our children's time. I was thinking, oh my gosh, there are so many good stories today in our scripture readings. And um, I know you guys talked about Jacob last week um, a little bit. So I'm going to talk about Jacob in a second here. You talked about him in Sunday school, right? And um, so did you guys do the story of Jacob wrestling last week? Did you talk about that story? That's the story we have for Sunday reading today. So the word that I think kind of touches on all the three readings, on the first read, the Old Testament reading, the reading from Timothy, and on the gospel reading is persist. Do you know what persist means? Persist. Or sometimes we say persevere is kind of a word that's similar. Like keep trying. That's when you keep trying. When things are really hard, do you ever do something that's really hard and you have to keep trying? Like when you're at soccer, you guys, and something is really hard, you learn a new drill and you have to keep trying or a dance. 
and something's hard, you have to persist and keep trying, right? Or if you're learning something new at school, and, and maybe you have to persist and keep trying to learn it. Well, what Jesus and, is talking about and what our other Bible readings are talking about, I think, is um, persisting in being God's person in the world. It's really not easy to be God's person, um, to be a loving person um, in the world. Sometimes it's really hard. It's, it's hard to be a loving person when people are mean to you or when people are tempting you to do things that you shouldn't do. Um, it's, it's not easy to be God's person in the world. So it's not easy to be compassionate and caring and trying to help people when sometimes people are resisting you. So I think about friends. I have friends who try to help people who are hungry and homeless. And sometimes they try to help the homeless and the hungry people. And it's really, that's a good thing to do, right? You want to help people who don't have a place to live or who don't have food. But then some people that have power get pushed back on them and say, no, you shouldn't be helping those homeless and hungry people. Those hungry and homeless people should just go away from our neighborhood. So it's not easy being God's person. We have to, what's that word? Persist and keep trying, right? So Jacob persisted. He was wrestling and he had questions and doubts and he wrestled with this angel, this being that turned out to be from God. Um, and But he persisted. And God said, that's okay. It's okay to have questions. It's okay to wrestle with God. And God blessed Jacob. That's how we know it was okay. But when you wrestle with God, you don't come away the same, right? So Jacob went away limping. Now he would remember that for the rest of his life. <clears throat> but he was blessed at the same time. So there's, that's the Jacob story. Um, and that's how that connects with persisting. The, um, the, other, um, the other one is uh, Jesus tells a story about a widow who... Um, keeps persisting because she's asking for justice. Something is not right. She has not been treated fairly. You guys know that a widow is a woman who has lost her husband. Yeah, she her husband has died. And so back in Jesus' time, she would have been very vulnerable, very, um, very easy for someone to hurt because she didn't have much money or power because men... Um, were kind of in control of things a lot more then than they are now. So women didn't have a say, although, well, okay, you're laughing. Okay, grownups. I mean, there, there is some, yeah, some things kind of pendulum keeps swinging, doesn't it? But back in Jesus' time, I think it was a little worse than now. So, uh, <laughs> so the men were in control. The women didn't have much control. She had no husband to help her. So she was asking, this is not fair. I've not been treated fairly and I want fairness. So she kept going to the judge and she kept going over and over and over. And finally the judge said, okay, she persisted. And he's like, I'm going to give her what she wants just so that she'll stop annoying me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story, right? So there's that. So it's, sometimes it's not easy. We need to persist and we need to keep praying. That was Jesus' other point. Prayer will help us to be able to persist. It will give us the strength that we need. When we pray, when we connect with God, then we can get tap into that source of strength that we need to persist when things are hard. The last one is from Timothy. So Timothy, uh, the, the man who wrote the letter to Timothy, um, Paul was an older pastor, and he was writing to a young pastor and saying, you know what, I know it's really hard to be a leader. I know it's really hard because people don't listen to you, especially when you're younger and they don't like, they don't want to listen to what you say or what your advice is. And they just want to run off and listen to um, wh whoever tells them what they want to hear. Well, that sounds like today too, doesn't it? <laughs> people having, well, the time is coming, said the, says Paul, when people will have itching ears and they'll just follow the teachers that they want to follow. They don't, Follow the good teachers like you, Timothy. And so he tells Timothy to persist. There's that word again. Persist. Keep going. 
because God is with you. And just keep doing the good work. And God will help you and it, and it will prevail. And it will be worth it, even though it's hard. So I want you guys to remember the word of the day today. Persist and remember that um, when things are hard, you know what? Just keep being a good person. Be, keep being God's person in the world. Keep loving just like you do. I know you guys are, are really loving people. All right? We pray with me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for being with us always in the good things and in the hard things. Help us to persist in being your people and loving and blessing the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I open scripture or revisit the stories that I know well, I come back to certain themes, and they do seem to be themes that I need to hear over and over and over again. The theme that I'm hearing in this season of our lives, in this text, on this World Hunger Sunday, is the majestic and miraculous and minuscule way that God so often takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. The dust of the ground in Genesis with the breath, the ruach, the spirit of God, out of clay becomes human. And that scrawny little shepherd boy that the father, Jesse, had almost forgotten about, he couldn't be the king you're looking for, Samuel, becomes King David, the premier example of kingship, imperfect though it is in the Hebrew Bible, or a bleeding woman. You can't imagine anything more unclean or a paralyzed man with his dearest friends. All of these, not the wealthy, the beautiful, the educated, it's these who become exemplars of faith in Jesus' hands. When I think about my faith and how I try to live, I love going back to some of the earliest words for the ecclesia, the community of the faithful, calling themselves the way. The way, we follow the way of Jesus, the way of life, the way of love. All of this, it isn't meant to be the next religious institution or a minority cult in a cave in the corner of the desert. It's meant to be a movement, like a mustard seed, like a kudzu plant in the South, like Himalayan blackberries or English ivy here in the Northwest, not something we celebrate, but a humble force we understand the power of if we have ever tried to reclaim a garden and take it back to its native roots. It's a movement where everyone has dignity, where everyone is seen, and where everyone is celebrated to the degree that they too, in their ordinariness, can carry seeds of the divine. I love it because it takes the world and tips it upside down and helps us see with different lenses how God is and who God is. And some of you know that Luke is my favorite gospel because Luke continually, especially Luke, lifts up those who are forgotten in the hands of Jesus, and really places them as exemplars of holiness and faithfulness and trust. And it takes us back to that first reading in the hands of Jeremiah, where God is saying, you've betrayed me again, according to the prophet Jeremiah, but in you, I will place my law inside, inside your mind, inside your heart. And I trust you, not a book or words on a page or a perfect, handsome King Saul to bear my way, but you, 
the widows and the orphans and the dusty shepherd kid. It's you, ordinary people, who will be exemplars of the faith. It's like that fabulous Mother Teresa quote, which you've all heard. We're not called to do great things. We are called to do small things with great love. And when I think of those people who have been exemplars of the faith in my life, that's exactly who they are and who they've been. You will never know their names. So the persistent widow is someone like that, persists with fierce determination in her quest. Jesus is trying to say, how do we pray? How do we live? How do we love? How how do we see fast the illusions that culture would hand us and have us swallow? And I think about who have been my persistent widows, who through their prayer or their faithfulness in activism or giving, or just their capacity to see past what culture tells us is important, manifest something of the extraordinary. Who have been your persistent widows, either persistent with you or persistent with the world. I um, lost a dear friend and a model, that kind of model of faithfulness. Let's call her Sarah, just two weeks ago. She was a member of the congregation I served. She stood up for things she believed. She looked like any other church lady, but she knew how to be fierce for the sake of love. And one of the things she would pray almost every Sunday is, as we would share the prayers of the people, God, I pray for all of our LGBTQ neighbors and siblings and children that they find a home in the church and in the world. And it wasn't the kind of prayer that she was using to be preachy. It wasn't the kind of prayer that she was hoping would manifest radical change in the church that she loved tomorrow. It was persistent. It was faithful. It was fierce. And her faithfulness, her belief in prayer, her conviction that her prayer mattered helps me be a better pastor, a better Christian, a better human. Who have been your persistent widows? I think of my mother when I was a teenager and how everything she did to me was a little bit cringy and embarrassing. And I would wake up in the morning on the weekends and notice her writing in her prayer journal. And at the time, I just thought, my mom. But now I realize it's one of my anchors. I know that she just didn't talk about prayer. I saw her pray. Or someone else in the congregation I served who said, I write down in a little black book all the people who've asked me to pray for them. I write their name and some little word to help me remember why I'm praying. And then at night, I put it by my bedside and I just put my hand on the book on my nightstand. And that's my prayer. God knows what they need more than I do. I don't need words. And I hold it there and I'm silent with God. Some of you know that I traveled to Kenya this summer and I met a young teacher named Moses, whose prayer and faithfulness manifests in serving the children in the second largest slum in the world, Kibera. He was educated on a scholarship and everyone expected him to go serve in the suburbs where he could earn four times as much, but he returned to the slum in which he was raised so that other children could have a chance to be educated. In Nairobi, that's not a given. Every day, he works with children who are like him so that they can have what he has or more. Persistence, faithfulness, fierce love. 
in Jesus Christ and on his way, the ordinary becomes extraordinary. Bread and wine become body and blood. The neighbor, the annoying cousin, bear the face of the divine. And every time we pray or every time we go to church and we think, oh, it'd be so much more comfortable to just stay at home, sleep in, make a frittata, whatever. Every time we do something, we're telling the world with all its neon lights of urgency, with all its compulsions urging us to behave in a certain way, stop, slow down. You're not all that matters to me. And when we give, when we share of whatever we have, we're saying the same thing. In a culture that invites us to cling and hoard and distrust and isolate and fear that those values will not have the last word. For some of us, it's World Hunger Sunday, and it's an important day to remember that even in this country, this wealthy nation, one in four children, 24%, almost one in four live below the poverty line, and almost half of all children, no, I'm getting that wrong, half of all food stamp users are children. Can we be the kind of people God uses to make ordinary extraordinary? Can you imagine that every dollar bill, every automatic deduction that we give to church, every time we give to our neighbors in need, not because we're better, but because we are connected, we are the same. We all carry the capacity to bear the light of the divine. We're transformed. And the ordinary becomes extraordinary. Just a little bit. Let's trust that we follow a way where that can be true. We follow a way of Sarah, of praying quietly and imperfectly, of giving away our lives according to certain standards, so that maybe a God of love and grace, a God whose table is bigger than we can imagine, wants to shine through us. Can we trust, beloveds, that even we can be extraordinary in the hands of Christ? Go and be extraordinary. To go and be extraordinary. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Lori.
in gratitude and humility, let us join together in, in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. For all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace, and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice system. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work, that with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy is, is great. great. For whom else would the people of God pray? Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy One, you are the source of all life and of every good gift. You are the source of healing. And we lift up to you those who are in need of your healing touch. We give thanks for the successful um, surgery that Marlon had to get a pacemaker and ask for continued healing for him. We lift up to you, Janet, as she goes for surgery tomorrow. We pray that you would be with her, give her comfort and peace, guide the surgeon's hands. We pray for healing for her in the days to come. We pray for healing for Brian as he seeks to recover from COVID while being away from his family. Watch over him, God. Give him your peace. Hear us, O God. Your yes. mercy is great. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O God. Your yeah. mercy is great. Lord, I ask you to um, watch over Anne and Jeff, who were married this week, and um, just continue to bless them and help them to grow in love for you and for one another all the days of their life. Hear us, O God. Your yeah. mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. One, two, three. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Go ahead and share the peace however you feel comfortable doing so.
gracious God, in your great love you richly provide for our needs. Make these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. beside you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.